All right, Deuteronomy 28, 12 says, The Lord shall open to his good treasure, the heaven to give rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. As we started on Sunday morning, you have to go back and live Sunday. We kind of digress from actually teaching the subject of prosperity. We began to talk about the, the, the kind of a state of the church address and uh, where we were as a church and what we needed for God to do. And we're, we're believing that in the next six months we'll be totally out of debt. We have money in the bank. And we'll be able to do the things that we have in our heart to do. Amen? Then we're ministry-based. We're going to the nations of the world to preach the gospel. Listen, you know, we, we, we've, got, we've got things we need to give to people. Hallelujah. And it's going to take prosperity. So God wants to bring you into a place where you've got more than enough. Everybody say more than enough. You know, see, we're not called to live by, on barely get along. And look, at the past few years in the economy of the country, the people have been living on barely get along. Some people had not even getting along, you know. And God wants to bring you out of that and bring you into full supply and overflow. Can you say amen? Say full supply and overflow. Hallelujah. All right. God made a promise to Abraham that he make him rich. And the promise of Abraham is ours. Genesis 17, 6 and 7 says, God's promising Abraham, says, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I'll make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and thy seed after thee. If you just go ahead and run over to Galatians chapter 3 real quick, just so we make sure you understand this, because a lot of people, a lot of times people will do this, though, you'll, you'll go back into the Old Testament, and you'll find a promise, you'll find a scripture, they'll go, and then you say, well, that's what God wants for his people, and the people go, oh, that was for the Jews. Okay, fine. This, I'm a Jew. Because the Bible says he's not a Jew who was inward outwardly, but one who's a Jew inwardly. And God, the Bible refers to the church as the Israel of God. But let's just, well, without even trying to do those scriptures, let's use this one. Because here he says, God speaking to Abraham, I'll make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I'll establish my covenant between me and thee, and what? And who? Thy seed after thee, when? I love this part. The blessing of Abraham is to the seed of Abraham, when? In their generation. It's not something God did for Abraham. We're getting in, you know, getting a little of the, de of the uh, you know, it's not like the Kennedys where they put all that money into a trust fund and they're all living off the interest of it 60, 70 years later. This is that God is going to bless the seed of Abraham when? In their generation. Meaning it doesn't matter what's going on in your generation. God said the blessing of Abraham is coming on you. If you're the seed of Abraham. Well, let's just prove that real quick. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Isn't that what we just read there in Genesis 17, 6 and 7? He said, and thy seed after thee. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now somebody says, he'll see, it's not to you, it's to Christ. Well, keep reading. Verse 28, 29. And if ye be Christ, possessive, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. So the blessing of Abraham was to Abraham and his seed in their generation. <clears throat> Galatians says it was not made to seeds as of many, but as in the one Christ. But then it goes on down to the 29th verse and said, and if you're Christ, if you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So what's the promise? I'll make my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and thy seed after thee. In verse 6, we can back up now. And I'll make thee exceedingly fruitful and I'll make nations oh, fruitful. That means prosperity. That's prosperity. Fruitfulness is prosperity. God wants to bless you. Amen. Run over to Romans, if you will. Did anybody get here in time to eat? How many, how many got here in time to eat? How many got blessed eating? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know it's someone. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you, whenever I use a scripture I wasn't planning on using, then I get in trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. Bill, help me out. And I'll bless you and bless you. Is it Hebrews? And multiply you and multiply you. Uh huh. You just run off here and. Somebody find out, I will bless you, and in blessing I'll bless thee, and, 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 multi and, and in multiplying I'll multiply there, something like that. Huh? Say it again. Hebrews 6, 14. There we go. There we go. Verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Now, Weymouth translation says that I will bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. So the blessing of Abraham is the blessing of uh, being blessed and increased. Can you say amen? It is a fact. It is blessing. God increases everything. I said God, God increases everything. The blessing of Abraham is the blessing of increase. Now listen, I, I know, I know many people in the church, many people in this church, many churches have been, have been experiencing decrease. That means we're not walking in the blessing. I said that means we're not walking in the blessing. So what are we going to do? Well, we're not going to say, we, we, listen, so we need to stop whining. I mean, I don't have enough cheese to go around for all the wine. All right? So if there's not enough cheese, let's stop whining. Let's stop complaining. And let's start getting back in the face saying, I'm a child of Abraham. I'm the seed of Abraham. And if I'm the seed of Abraham, then the blessing of Abraham comes on me. And the blessing of Abraham is the blessing of increase and multiplication. Amen? God wants to increase me. God wants to increase you. God wants you to have more than enough. God wants the church to have more than enough. Let me tell you some economic hard times have come for one reason and one reason alone. To destroy the ability of the church to reach the nations with the gospel. God says this, he gives us the power to get wealth that we may establish his covenant in the earth. <clears throat> now a lot of prosperity preachers, and look, I, I, listen, I listen to them. I, I, I know I'm, 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 I'm one of them. Amen. Hallelujah. But they use that scripture, I'm, God gives us the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant in the earth. And they put the spin on it that it's, it's God's um, Establish of his, prosper, of his covenant of prosperity toward you is why he's getting you rich. And, I, and, and you can kind of take it that way, but I really believe the import of that scripture is more along this line. God gives us the power to get wealth that we may reach the nations, get, establish his covenant in the earth, go reach the nations with the gospel. It's not just so God can establish a covenant, prosperity, covenant of prosperity with you the only reason he wants, well, the, not the only, but the main reason he wants to prosper you is so we can get the gospel out. It's so that the kingdom of God can be advanced. So that humanity can be reached. Not so you can have seven houses. There's nothing wrong with being blessed. But when your blessings overtake you, and all you care about is what kind of yacht and car and house and stuff you're going to get, and you don't care about the lost and dying that are going to hell, then there's something wrong with your prosperity. That went over big. Somebody shout, glory! And there's somebody going, oh my. <clears throat> now God wants to bless you. I understand that. I believe that. I, got, you know, I believe that Abraham was rich. We're going to get into that. Abraham was, was rich. It's very rich. But if your riches possess you instead of you possessing them, there's a problem. And I know a lot of people, the only reason they're, in, they're, they're coming to prosperity churches or going to prosperity meetings is because they want to be instantly rich overnight, get all their debt canceled, and run out and travel the world. They want to get a yacht. They want to sell everything they got and get them a Harley and go ride the road. Just be a free spirit. No commitment to anything. God didn't call us to be uncommitted. God called us to do the work of God. 
Amen. There's a job to get done. There are people to reach. There are nations to turn upside down. Amen? Are you here? There are missionaries to support. As a matter of fact, we've got Ken Cassett coming. Ken will be with us Sunday, um, the 20, 16th, 17th, 18th, the 25th. All right, so, uh, Ken's a missionary to Estonia, not Gastonia, Estonia. Okay? It's the northernmost of the Baltic states. <clears throat> Actually, I told somebody time I went. To, I was I was on a mission trip to, to to Estonia, and they they literally thought I had said Gastonia, and they were trying to figure out how, why it cost so much money to get down to Gastonia. No, no, Estonia, one of the Baltic states, right below Finland. You know, you, you know, way up there where the Russians are. I actually, I've been in Estonia up to the northeast corner, to the, to the Narva River. And it's about, in some places, it's only 40, 50 feet wide. And, and Russia's on the other side. And at the bridge there, there's a, there's a castle on one side and a castle on the other side. And, and the castles were built hundreds of years ago when they used to fight each other, just shoot each, other, each other's castle across the river. And uh, they had a statue of Lenin that had been torn down. He was laid over on the side. Boom. See, even the Russians got enough sense to know that we don't communism. A lot of Americans think we want it. You don't want it. Anyway, you don't want it. If you just go travel to some of the former Soviet countries, you'll find out real quick you don't want socialism or communism. It, it ain't nothing like it's presented to be. Hallelujah. Let me just leave that one alone. I guess I better leave it alone. God wants to bless his people. Amen? But, so, but anyway, Ken's coming. Ken will be with us. He's a, he, he's, he lives in Paida. Estonia, which is in the heart of, of Estonia. We've been with Karen several times and ministered over there. He's got a wonderful church. Uh, good people, love the Lord. And uh, we've taught in their, their, uh, their church, taught and ministered in Bible schools. I, I've taught some of their people in Bible schools. They're, they're just good people. And he's coming, th he's coming through. So we said, well, go ahead and stop and minister with us. We just, you know, uh, we, we love you. We want to bless you. We just want to spend some time together, too. Uh, I love to spend time when we talk with him. So, uh, but we, we get missionaries. We've got to reach We've got to help missionaries do the job. Amen. Sometimes we need to stop thinking about giving to the guy who's, who's you know, traveling around America telling you how to get rich and think about it. We got missionaries overseas who are living on a 20th of what you're living on. God wants us to get to the place where we're able to do the things of God and help people get the job done. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. And so God wants, to get, wants, he wants us to prosper. But let's make sure that we understand that the end result of prosperity is to position us to reach the nations. And God doesn't care if you have a good car in between. He doesn't care if you have nice clothes. Amen? But let's not use it as a justification for lasciviousness either. Amen? I got a $25,000 guard dog. You can go for $10,000, give $15,000 to a missionary. You don't have to have a $25,000 guard dog. Amen? Are you here? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't have to have seven houses. Get your timeshare on the Riviera. You ain't going to be over there but once every so often anyway. We just, we, listen, we've got to have balance on this and not get in excess. Let's get, let's get to the place where we're, 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 we're empowering the local church to do the job it's called to do to reach nations. Help the local church support missionaries. Help Because we establish relationships with people. Amen. And so we can support this missionary. We support this person. You know, God wants to prosper. God, God will bless you and you have, you have plenty. God wants you to have plenty in your houses. He does. So I, I don't want to get in one ditch where you can't have nothing, you've got to give it all away. But you don't want to get in the other ditch where God wants you to just, you know, you know run, run around and, and be with all the rich folks. Look how they live. I don't want to go to the gentleman's club and smoke stogies and drink beer or bourbon so I can hang with them because so I'm prosperous. I'm not going to smoke a stogie or drink bourbon even if I don't have to uh, go with the big dogs. According to Wesleyan Academy, uh, the kids, I am the big dog. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let's go over to Psalm 105. Let's go back. Now let's, let, let's don't get too far on one side of this thing. God wants us to prosper. Psalm 105. You know, can I last talk about some of these things about prosperity, about not having too much and, and not getting. Here's the big thing. If God needs it, does he have access to it? 
Now, just listen. That's one thing to mouth it. I said, it's one thing to mouth it. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, you know, and then every time it's a need, it's gone. I've seen, I've seen people take and, and talk about how much they're going to give God, and then every time, every time they get a little extra amount, they go spend it all on something. And then when the need shows up, there's nothing left to get. Well, then, you, then you're just talking. I said, you're just talking. Remember when they built the temple? They started bringing so much stuff, they finally had to say, stop! We got too much. People were just bringing it and just dumping it in piles. See? Because the work of God was important to them. The things of God, what God wanted was important to them. And they just started bringing it and piling it up. They finally had to tell them to stop. Remember when, when the temple had gone dormant and, and, they, and they were re retaking up uh, Thing offer, they took up an offering, basically, to replenish the temple and for the priest and all that stuff. And the people started bringing stuff and heaping up the, the corn and all the stuff they needed for the temple. And they had to finally go out and tell the people again, stop. Now, see, that's where you got the right heart. I said, so that's when you got the right heart. Now, a lot of people get mad at Hasidic Jews because they're all rich. You know why they're rich? Because their forefathers gave like crazy. They're walking in the blessing of the giving. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm 105, verse um, 37. He brought them forth also, this is out of Egypt, with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among them. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of, the, uh, fear of them fell on them, upon them. Hallelujah. When, when they went to the, the God said, go borrow from the Egyptians. And when they went, they gave them everything. They said, I, I need three dresses. Here, take four. I need $100. Here, take three. I only need a couple of ounces of gold. Take five pounds. Just get out of our country. And, they, and listen, remember, they were only going to go a three days journey to worship. They went out with all that gold and silver and all that stuff for a three day journey. Supposedly. <clears throat> Hallelujah. That was an expensive journey, wasn't it? No, it was, it was, their, it was, it was reparations for uh, the 400 years of slavery. And God was going to bless his people. Because see, really, see, it wasn't just a slavery. Remember that Joseph had blessed Egypt with the wisdom of God of what to do when the famines were coming. Seven years of plenty stored up, seven years of famine, there was enough left over. And then the king arose who, who did not know Joseph and took Israel into captivity. And that, see, they, they, and they took him in for 400 years. But remember that God had used Joseph to bless that whole nation and, kept, and, and saved that nation from destruction and poverty. And, they, and they, he ill-treated the blessing. Hallelujah. So God brought them up with silver and gold. There was not one feeble one among their tribes. That means everybody was not sick. How many of you have ever seen the old Cecil B. DeMille movie from the 50s? The Ten Commandments. Great movie. I love that movie. Biblically inaccurate. I mean, you know, all the, the, the love storyline and all that stuff. You know, we don't have any, you know, whatever. But it's still good. It's a good movie. Splitting of the Red Sea, technological marvel for the era. It still looks pretty cool. I got it in Blu-ray. It looks really cool. Could they do a better job with, with, with CGI's now? Probably, but I'm going to tell you something. To have hand-drawn that and to have done what they did with that in the air was phenomenal. All right? I love that movie. Amen? It's a cool movie. But, but, but anyway, so they got the guys coming out sick and blind, their own stretchers. That's not accurate. There was not one feeble one among them. I said there was not one feeble one among them. They all came out under their own steam. They all came out healthy, wealthy, and wise. Amen? Hallelujah. Because God wants to bless. God wants you blessed. Why? Because we're going to reach nations. Jesus is coming back. There's, there's got to be more important things as whether you get a Bentley or not. God don't care if you have one, but you've got to get your heart. The Word of God sets your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. And one reason that a lot of people have not seen the fullness of prosperity is, is because their heart has been set in the wrong place. 
I'm going to say something. I know I'll get myself in trouble, but I'm going to say it anyway. When a minister can stand up and say, if you'll give to me, God's going to bless you, and the ministers are running around rich, and you're not, something's wrong. When all of them are getting money shoved in their coat pockets, and they're walking out with bags of money after a service, and saying, because you bless the man of God, you're going to get blessed, and the people aren't getting blessed, something is wrong. Hello? When people, when you hear, when you next, and they go to the next meeting, God, the, the, I, got, I walked out with a bag of $25,000. Well, if you do that every week, that's a good salary. What do you need with $25,000? Well, it's, it's, it's the spiritual principle. What spiritual principle? I heard our people teaching. You've got to give up. God said give to the poor. He did say that the labor is worthy of his hire. I understand that principle. But the kingdom of God has to be advanced. And we can't rape the church and pile it all in the people's hands and then run around and talk about how they're, how they're going to get, how, by blessing them, making them prosperous. You're going to prosper and then people aren't prospering. Amen. Well, let's get back to this. Let's start first of all. What did God say to do with your money first? Bring it to the storehouse so there's meat in this house, so there's something to do with the kingdom of God. Let me say something here. You don't take care of the traveling ministry, the whatever, until you take care of your local church. That's number one. And not just tithe, offerings. Why? Because the local church is what God uses. I believe in, I believe in ministries that travel and, and, and go other places and do other things. But they are subordinate to the local church. Amen. God, God wants to use the local church. Hallelujah. Well, he brought out silver and gold. Well, God wants you to have the silver and gold so you can bless the kingdom. Can you say amen? All right. Now, next. God, listen. The Lord gave his covenant people a favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so they gave them what they asked. Fear of God's covenant people fell on the Egyptians. And the Lord gave favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. That is Exodus 12, 36. Okay? And then Psalm 105, verses 8 and 42 through 45, God remembered his holy word and promised to Abraham. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, verse 42, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. Let me tell you something. God will remember his word when you get in faith. You line yourself up in the position of faith, and God will remember his holy word. You bring your tithe and offering into the storehouse. Can I say one more thing before I just, well, since I already got myself in trouble? I may as well just go all the way. Your tithe and your offering are not manipulative tools to govern and rule a pastor or a ministry. You don't have the right to do that. Shoot me if I'm lying. It's not your tithe. It belongs to the Lord. The tithe belongs to the Lord. The offering belongs to the Lord. They are not tools that you can use to control how somebody, what somebody does or doesn't do in a ministry position. You don't have that authority or that right. And if you use it that way and use it to do stuff with and you think you're going to get blessed, you're not going to be blessed. You used it wrongly, and therefore it was not a faith, and therefore you don't get the blessing. Where's, where's, where's my bobblehead? I need my bobblehead tonight. Hallelujah. Now, if we'll stay in faith, God will bless us. But you, you're not in faith if you're, if you're manipulating people. I've seen it happen too many times. Seen it in churches all over the place. I remember one time we first came to Greensboro. Somebody, somebody was in the church, and they came and told me, my tithe pays the lease on the church. No, it doesn't. Because it ain't your tithe. It's the Lord's. Hello. And, what, you know, and, 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 you know, what are you saying? Are, are, you not, are you writing your check to pay the lease or not? 
No, I'm writing it to the church. Then you're not paying the lease on the church. It's the Lord's tithe. Amen. Yeah. Now, what's that all about? To tell you you've got to do what they say do. Because if I leave, I'm take, I'll take the lease out with me. See, so that's manipulation. Yeah. My tithe pays the lease on the church. And they left and took their tithe with them. And we're still here. Amen. Hallelujah. That went over big. Yeah, I had kind of similar response that you had when they said that to me. Really? All right. And he gave, listen, 42, he remembered his holy promise to Abraham, his servant. He brought forth his people with joy and chose them with gladness, gave them the lands of the heathen and inherited the labor of the people that they might, listen, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise you, the Lord. God blesses you and brings you into the land of full, so what? So you can observe his, his, his commandments, his statutes, keep his laws, so that you can honor him with your lifestyle, so you can please him in your actions, so that the kingdom of God can be expanded. Money, God wants to bless you. But remember that money has to stay sanctified to his purposes and not to your gain. Now, part of his purpose is to bless you. I believe that with all my heart. God wants to bless you. Say, God wants to bless me. Let's just keep right. Let's understand if we... I'm going to tell you, if we don't get some things right in the body of Christ, we're not going to see the transfer of wealth, all the stuff that people have preached and promised you're going to have the, the, the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. We're all going to get rich and all this. Listen, if we're not going to get our heart right and not, not have a right attitude about things, you're not going to walk in it. I don't believe that. I don't believe God in that faith. Really? Looking, if you will, over to the book of James, please. That's the book right after Hebrews. The Apostle James, glory to God, said somewhere in here, <laughs> James chapter 4, starting in verse 1, from whence come wars and fightings among you, come it not, they not hence, even your lust that war in your members. You lust and have not. Now, that word lust is also translated desire. The same word translated lust and the word, word does translate desire in the King James is from the same Greek word. Really, to make it lust, it would have to be wrong. Otherwise, it would be strong desire. So you have desires, have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. Okay, now they're getting in trouble because they're not asking, but... Because you ask and receive not, uh-oh, because you ask amiss. Now, how do they ask amiss? That you may consume it upon your own lust. When you get to the place that all you can think about is getting money so you can, get, you can just live lasciviously, you've started your path, yourself down the wrong path of desire and the wrong mindset of what God wants out of you. And it doesn't mean that you've got to be, I, can't ever, I ain't never going to get a nice house. I ain't never going to get a nice car. I always got to drive. You know, uh, my, Janie grew up in a Flintstone mobile. They used to, the floorboard was rusted out. And they would have, you know, and so there's holes in it. And they could see the road down there through the holes, you know. You're going down the road, which is not good because if you've got a leaky uh, muffler, you get, you know. But the air conditioner didn't work, so the windows were always open. And they would get stuff and drop it. And then jump up and turn around and look out the back window and watch it bounce down the road. Kids are, you know, and they just didn't know anything. They didn't know any different. That's pretty cool. You, can you do that in your car? No, well, look what we can do. They didn't see it as a bad thing. They got to drop stuff out and watch it. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, that's cool. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Uh, they could see the they could see the dirt through the floor of their house that they lived in. You had this, this, the 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 uh, slats you could see through the bottom, and see the the, the dirt under the house. And that didn't work real good in the winter. Hello, and, you know, you'd call that dirt poor, you know. But you know, they had one room that had heat. There's oil heater in one room, and they would uh, they'd stand up next to that heater and get so hot they about burn themselves. They'd run, jump in the bed and, the, and pull the old quilt old. The old quilts, remember the old heavy quilts? Pull that up over their head because they could breathe and, and watch almost ice form from their breath. But you know what? You, still have, you can still have a heart for God and have all that yeah. and live in that kind of way. You don't have to, you know, we don't have to be living in the Taj Mahal. God wants to bless us. God wants to bring us that way. He wants us to keep a right heart and understand that he doesn't mind us being blessed and having things, but he doesn't want them to have us. And all we can do is, 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 is absorb and buy. Now, if you come into my house, I got several TVs. In my, I've never, I haven't bought one. My mother-in-law keeps buying them for us. I got a 55-inch flat panel Sony in my bonus room. I didn't buy it. My mother-in-law bought it for us for Christmas two years ago, three years ago. I want y'all to have it. Okay. I got surround sounds. I, you know, uh, I actually bought my dad one one year for Christmas, and he gave it back to me a few years later. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, you don't want it? No. Okay. Sure. You know, so it's Okay. It really is okay to be blessed. But let's just make sure that we keep our heart right. Understand, we've got to reach people. There are people going to hell. There are people going to close their eyes tonight, right now, in the next two seconds, X number of thousands of people around the planet are going to go into eternity. And there's a gospel that's got to be preached to the nations. I mean, a, a true gospel. It's not void of power. It's not void of the Holy Ghost. It's not void of a call to repentance and leaving the world behind and coming into the kingdom. Not a pseudo-gospel of stay like you are, it's okay. They must hear the truth of the gospel so they're brought to repentance and accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And there's got to be a church that rises up and does that job. God called us, uh, here I go again, We're, God's called us as a ministry base. We're to go to the nations. I must go and do the things God's told me to do in the nations. I must pastor, and I must go. I got to do both. We got it, like I said Sunday, we got the money has to come. God wants to bless you so you can bless the church, so the church can bless the nations. Our debt for this church is going. Going. Gone. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're calling, we're calling debt free. We're calling excess money in the bank. <coughs> Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. There's not going to be another person in this church who comes into prosperity who leaves right before they get it. That's happened too many times. Right as people come in to start coming into a lot of money and start getting to a certain place, then they leave. Had one lady one time was getting ready to get $25,000 from an insurance thing and she was going to give us, she was going to tithe on it. And about two weeks before it came in, she left. Some other church got the money. Well, that's okay for other churches, for churches to get the money, but God's got a call for us. There's things for us to do. There's things for us to reach. There's people for us to reach. Amen. There's a job to do. There's ministers to restore and set back in ministry. There's nations to reach with the gospel. There's a job to get done. Amen. There's people to reach in our area. There's people to reach in other nations. Glory to God. I am shotgunning all over the place on this. God's desire is for the covenant blessings to come on his people. Galatians 3.14. Uh, Christ has been made curse for us. Curse is written. Everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might walk in the promise of the Spirit through faith. God wants his people walking in the promise of Abraham. Why? Remember God said to Abraham, I'll bless you and bless you. But he also said this. In thee shall all nations be blessed. <coughs> the reason for the blessing and the blessing is so that the nations could be blessed by his blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. 
We're not going to fall by the wayside in the, car, in the mission of God. Hallelujah. We're not going to become shipwrecked in our faith in the mission of God. Ha ha. And we're going to restore those who have and bring them back into their call and bring them back into their mission and see them walk in it once again. Hallelujah. <clears throat> there are things to get done. Amen. And I'm telling you, you know, Sunday was, we're a new, it's a new anointing for a new, new uh, harvest. Kevin Durant last Wednesday. I'm telling you, we're going to walk in what God called us to walk in. And the debt that has been hanging around this church's neck is destroyed in Jesus' name. Well, there's not enough people here to get rid of it. All it takes is one. Not even here. It only has to be here. God can bring them in. This takes one to walk in and take care of it. Somebody who's gotten the prosperity and it's available to God, he says, go give. <coughs> All it takes is for you to walk, uh, suddenly walk into something supernatural. God gives you a witty invention. God will call you, you write a song. Madeline Lefebvre, y'all have anybody ever heard of Madeline Lefebvre? How many ever heard the song without him? Without him, I would be dying. Elvis recorded it. Madeline Lefebvre wrote it as a, like a 20-year-old kid in the army. He had been part of the family called the Singing Lefebvre's. He wrote the song. Elvis heard it. Elvis liked it. Elvis recorded it. His first royalty check was $90,000 in 1960-something. Went down to the dealership and wanted to buy a Corvette. And the guy said, son, you, you can't afford this. And he just reached up there and threw a bag of money on top of the vet. Said, I'm paying cash. 20 years old. Wrote one song. 90, that was the first royalty check. You know what happened after that? <clears throat> Once Elvis recorded it, everybody in gospel music recorded it. Royalty started coming in like crazy off that song. Yeah. Yeah. It don't take much. One idea, one song, one thing from God to do calls all the things to be turned around so we can do what God calls us to do. Amen. Everybody ready to go? We're going we're to remind God of his covenant to us. See, we've got a job to do. God's called us to do things. God's called us into the work of God. So, we, Lord, we remind you of your calling upon our church. And so we thank you for the supply and, 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 we, and, and to get the job done, in Jesus' name, amen, amen.